Saidi, when the Sheikh sparks the student to jump a ring from the atom, is there a recovery period? Recovery period? The question is uh, on the assumption that something has happened and you feel that an energy came and now you feel you have to recover. But it's an understanding in its reality that from the nucleus has to come a qudra. So on the science of it they saw that within the nucleus an electrical charge came and hit the electron and only at that moment the electron was able to jump one of the rings to come closer into the center. So it means that the servant's movement into the Divine is what Allah is asking that, have you penetrated the heavens? Because the heavens are within our chest not the skies on the outside. But you can't because you need a sultan. So it means that we've given all these talks that the impossibility to reach your reality and your ahad, your covenant with Allah without baya. So if you're in a system of just going to Jummah then you've not pledged your allegiance. So it means that you didn't even fulfill the requirements of Islam that you pledge your allegiance to Allah to uphold the Qur'an and follow Sayyidina Muhammad And the deep reality of bayat is that from this allegiance I'm taking my path towards my reality. When that becomes the reality of the shahada, the reality of I want to be with those whom witness because I'm taking a, a false shahada, I don't see anything. Shahada is actually to say, I, I, La ilaha illallah and Muhammadun Rasulullah and you don't see either of them. You don't see Allah and you don't see Sayyidina Muhammad So means we're going over all those talks, so then the reality of the path is that Allah guides the servant to the turuqs, guides the servant that take their bayat, guides the servant, now you have to follow and find your covenant within. And the Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Journey within begins. So only through the bayat that they took the initiation means that they've imitated again the reality that they want the hand of Allah which is the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad with the hand of these ulul amr and Allah's hand upon them all. And then Allah said, my hand is upon all of them. And as a result of that situation they now have a connection into the nucleus to receive the energy and the power that's necessary to continuously dress their heart and their reality. When it dresses their heart means now it's bringing their negativity closer into their positive realm. So you'll give off your negative electrons, your negative characteristics because nobody comes into the tariqah as infants but as you were pure one day and you lost your purity through this material world, you have to regain your purity. Futuwa and chivalry is to be purified and noble servants. 
And as a result you give away all of the negative characteristics. And that's exactly what's happening in the atom, their electrons are negative. So means they have to give away a negative characteristic and in exchange Allah will give you a positive characteristic. So there has to be a balance in the, in the electric equation. If a negative is going a positive has to be exchanged with it and as a result they're drawing near, they're coming closer, they're coming closer. If they're in muraqabah and they've harnessed the reality of muraqabah then the hadith of Prophet comes and describes, it's like 70 years of worship. One hour of tafakkur is like 70 years of worship means then there's a tremendous amount of energy being conveyed. So, so much energy is coming to the servant and pushing away so many negativities as a result the servant is moving very quick into the Divine the Presence. And they begin to traverse these realms and to their seven realities and to the Divine the Presence which is the nucleus. And we said before then the nucleus is the Muhammadan haqqaiq. Not that they're going to see Allah because la shariqa, even so Ahlul Sunnah scholar describing that, that they're going to be witnessing Allah and, and uh, in paradise and on Jummah, Jummah comes and they'll be witnessing Allah but there's la shabi. So in what shaykh, in what form would they think they'd be witnessing Allah and in what kind of vicinity would you have that you could witness Allah that's anthropomorphic, that's giving a form to Allah that not accepted in the Sunni belief. So the witnessing that any servant can witness is Muhammadun Rasulullah and only Allah see it. When they pray Jummah they see Prophet sitting upon an arsh and that all creation is at his feet. And that is the witnessing because that's the hadith that Allah says, I'm not on heaven, I'm not on earth, I'm on the heart of my servant. That hadith describes Prophet sitting upon the Divinely Throne that Allah has built for Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah sits upon the heart of Prophet in which there can be no image or form to be seen. Allah la, la shariqa la, la mithla ala la shabiha la, that there is nothing on or like unto Allah for you to compare it with. So means these Divine realities and the people of Marifah they have witnessed. So they're not giving philosophies and maybe you can sit and debate with them because you're talking to a blind man and a seeing man or what, how could it be the same? If a man is sitting and saying, I, I see this. And five blind men want to sit with the philosophy and say, but let me guess what it's like, the guy's seeing it. And the others want to guess but that's why they walk away and say, people are crazy, I don't know what you're talking about. One, the person sees, they see it. At that time we give a description of what they see. What are five blind men going to do? Add another one on top of it too and make a six blind men give you uh, philosophies of what they think that would be. And that's why Allah takes His servants in a path called marifa, in which their spiritual experiences begin to open their heart and they witness what Allah wants them to witness. And as a result of being witnesses of the Divine only their testimony is accepted in Divine the Presence. Because there can't be a, an attorney that doesn't see anything, didn't accomplish anything. But Allah holds them to account of what you've witnessed, as a result you can speak. Because you speak from what you witness. Now if somebody witnessed even higher usually then they won't have permission to speak. But you can't speak on what you haven't witnessed and say, well no he witnessed it so I'm going to describe what he described to me. So, but that's a false witness and that, tes that testimony becomes hearsay in court. Though you're making it up because you're saying, he said this is like it was and then you, judge will ask you, did you see that? He said, no but he said it was like that. 
they throw that testimony out. So the people of reality, they can only speak from what they've seen. Now compare that with five philosophers, they just, that's retarded, they won't even sit in association with that. So they speak to what they've witnessed as a result of their witnessing, then they speak. Now if there's higher and somebody has witnessed at a higher reality, then that's between Allah and the servant inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what is the quickest way to shove our nafs off the chair, especially when being bombarded with emotions? And are all emotions nafsani? Well, you have to go through each one and write them down. And if an emotion is based on the soul and, and being humbled and, and uh, people bothering you and you staying quiet then the emotion of being humbled and sad is not nafsani and there is no fast in anything. You have to resolve in your life, the only fast is in fast food. So you want something fast, go get something to eat but the Divine Path there's no fast. So it's a matter of being consistent that every day I'm going to sit and do my meditation, I'm going to do my awr, I'm going to do my zikrs, I'm going to keep myself always in wudu. And Allah is sending an immense amount, Prophet is sending immense amount of energies because there's no more time. And you see the testing and bombarding is becoming much more severe. And as a result all they want is good manners, keep good manners, keep good manners. People come and go and if you show bad manners you're going to lose your connection and that's the danger. So everybody has to train on how to connect and connect and connect. And uh, everything, everything is in li is life is, is all similar. That when you love somebody you have to keep your loyalty. You don't make a zina, you don't start to go here and there and, and to reconnect your heart with other people. So it means that test is going to come and it comes in everybody's life. And this is not the time to fail that type of test because you'd be left out on your own in the middle of a storm. So the shaykh in your area and teaching you is like a shelter. If you do things wrong you'll be kicked out of his shelter. That leaves you out on the street unless you can find another person with that level of authority to shelter you and then build your relationship and your connection and everything back again. Because we've seen people come and go and people get excited and before you know they're out of the shelter of the shaykh and they're kind of like drifting around in different places. But this is not a place and a time in which to, to lose that type of test that's coming. The amount of difficulties that are coming, anyone connecting and trying to make their connection, keep their sense of loyalty and the commitment, the teachings. And anyone who negates the shaykh's teachings, well that's between them and Allah because the shaykh knows what he's been taught, knows the exact authority that he has. And even this shaykh has written authority and ijaz is from the Sultan and awliya. So there are no people on this earth right now with that ijazah. So whatever they claim, they can claim but it's even manifested in paper. So they can come to you and say that what you teach is not true and say, by whose means and who wants to say that? Bring to me Allah and Prophet in front of me and say that it's not true. And say, no it's my saying that it's not true but say, who are you? What you saw is what you saw but you cannot ever say from what I've been taught you saw. You can't speak to my heart nor into my… the eyes of my reality. So each speaks to their limit and even in the teachings of awliya we've given even as a comedical or comedy, a comedy type of example which was not a comedy. They say, Abu Yazid al-Bistami, Qaddasallahu Siru, Sultan al-Arifin thought that he had reached in his marifa and into realities oceans and, and realities and traverse and he said, I reached a point in which there was no one, no awliya had ever reached that point. 
And he was convinced because his relationship and all relationships with Allah are very unique and individual in which Allah gives to the servant thinking that it's uniquely theirs. And he says, I reached a point in which nobody had reached and Mawlana Shah Naqshaban wanted to humble and said, because we're all on the other side. So don't be too proud of what you think you got, keep going, keep going. But what it means is that you cannot speak to what somebody else's heart contains, you can only speak to what your heart contains. The knowledge of what you have and what you understand. If you reach to an arifin in which their knowledge you can't encompass, well Allah gave that example in Qur'an. When Sayyidina Musa could not encompass the knowledge of Sayyidina Khidr and Sayyidina Khidr warned him that your knowledge and my knowledge is different and that which you know you'll have no patience with me because of the, the little that you know of the way and the knowledges that I have, you'll be very impatient and it's not going to work. And eventually it didn't work and they had to part ways. So it means that this way is very unique. When you find someone that your heart vibrates and connects to, you need to hold tight. Regardless of anyone, any chat group, any rumors, gossips and backbitings, it's the tornado before the storm in which blows everybody and everyone everywhere and that's why the dajjal is called deceit. We don't have anything to do with antichrist because we have nothing to do with Christ. Prophet gave to us dajjal means deceit and deception in which people want to deceive people and that's the, the danger. Is that hold tight to what your heart emanates with and the realities and the practices and make your practices to be real by connecting, connecting, connecting. When you connect and you know it's real then there's nothing for anyone to talk about. We know who our shaykhs are, we know where the faiz comes from, we know what the connection is. Anybody can talk from their mouth all they want but the heart doesn't lie, especially the heart that sees doesn't lie, inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah Thank you Sayyidi for being available and giving your time to change <coughs> us. Sayyidi, if we do bad and preach love of Ahlul Bayt and companions while doing it, how munafiq is it and how to cure it? Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't like to go into ranks of munafiq. That that's not a nice subject but the good and false they shouldn't, they don't match. Allah is saying they don't go in the same place. So we don't prepare a beautiful dish on a soiled plate and say that the, the, the meat was good, I cooked it with love but the plate it came out of the washroom and is very dirty. So everything is contaminated at that time. So it's best to keep ourselves to be clean, the actions to be clean and the knowledge is to be clean. We said before that the knowledge in a dirty cup can be very damaging, can be poisonous and that again is the last days, right? As deceit comes where the character is bad. All of the prophetic character has to be loving, has to be kind. And when we described over years that, you know, anyone wants to look at Sultanul Awliya, Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani was an example of exactly what's being taught, actually was his teaching. That these are the real human, that they have hidayat and Allah dress them with wadood, best of character, best of manners, best of examples. So much so that when you witness them, they reminded you of Prophet But to come across somebody whom doesn't give you salams, is not kind, is not nice 
and you have to keep convincing your heart that maybe Prophet had a characteristic like this is not true. It's the imperfection of that individual and they didn't reach their Muhammadan characteristic. You know still hard and, and sharp on the edges needs more pounding, more time. But that's, that's not the way. So the people who represent the who then they have the characteristics of Prophet very kind, very loving, go through so many examples. They say Imam of the Budala, the one whom was in Damascus, he was a muhaddith, a scholar of hadith. He would come into the mosque and think he, he was the servant of a mosque serving and cleaning which is a high station but no, nobody understood who that was, he was giving everybody water. And he was the Imam of the Budala, of all the servants whom they, they, their image changes, very high level of awliya. Because of the kindness and love and the nature that they have, these are the exemplars of the human in which all others try to mimic and try their best. One day, Ya Rabbi let us to have that as an example of our humility and love and kindness. But now you know most people see just the, the very tough version of people and they think, oh this is the way Prophet was tough. No, Prophet was actually not tough like that, was very loving, very compassionate and what he wants for the nation in times of difficulty is love and compassion because already shaitan is scaring everyone away. All the Wahhabis are admitting on television, oh the Muslim youth are running from Islam, yeah thanks to you people. You get your dawah, finish it, get out, go, go to a party that you like to go to and leave the dawah to us. And they come to Islam, all our people are young, we don't convert old people. These are all the youth are coming to tariqah, old people are also welcome but this is not our conversion. The conversion rates on tariqah are all young, young men and, and, and they're eager to uphold the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad But their numbers they say, oh the people are running away, the youth are running away from Islam. Yeah because they make everything hard, very aggressive, very angry. I mean you can only do that for so long. And the family becomes rough and, and, and very edgy if you see their families that everything is taught to them to be rough, to be aggressive, to be… and they're aggressive with each other. And before you notice like raising pit bulls they start to attack each other in the home and the tariqah comes to teach, no the Prophet's way especially in these days is, is to, to make an ease for people. To take your path and make it easy for your, for your people and hard upon yourself. So each person individually can struggle with themselves but they should make the family to be easy and the environment to be easy so that people can prosper at their own speed inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, what's the reality of the number six in the six fastings of Shawwal? Does it relate to the six points of the star? Please forgive if inappropriate question. Yeah, the six is, uh, I think they said because Ramadan counts as 300 because each day counts as 10 days so it's 300 and six days of fasting in Shawwal count as 60. So as, as if you fasted the whole year the servant will be granted. And six is for wudud. So the six has a tremendous reality in the ocean of muhabbat and ishq. It is the secret of the wow. So six is an important number on its own but in relation to the shawwal then has to do with the completion of the, the, the year in fasting. And I think Haji Amina has a talk on the six days of shawwal and the creation of creation. That Allah created creation in six days and then the seventh was the establishment of the throne. There's no resting but the six pointed star and then the, the center represents the, the, the throne of the Divinely Presence. So these are six points of power and these are the six powers of the heart 
and the three points up and three points down into opening the Divinely Heart. And the seventh point is then when Allah says, I'm not on heaven, I'm not on earth but I'm on the heart of my servant. So how to open the arsh upon the heart of the servant? You must master the three points down which are his desires and we have a whole course on that on videos that uh, what comes to manage our three points down and then what opens the three points of the soul, inshaAllah. That becomes the reality of the six and opening these six powers and each, each triangle is 60 degrees. So the triangle down is actually 666. So that's why dajjal is represented by only the dunya desires. He doesn't want anyone to be taught the 666 of the heavens. So that you have to open the triangle of the heavens of your soul. Only your soul can come to tame your physicality. Shaitan wants to rid people of their soul power and only give them dunya power and calls them to allegiance to his command. And Allah calls us to the allegiance of Sayyidina Muhammad so that to receive six sixes which is the secret of Yaseen and 36 inshaAllah. But that just confused a lot of people probably. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum as wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, what are the best type of questions to ask to benefit the most from the time we have with you? The best questions to ask is that when you hear a talk, we said before the download is not complete. That you have to meditate that whole weekend on the talk and after you look at your notes you talked about this, you talk about so many different realities in, in these three days that the weekend opens up. So when you write them you go back every night meditating, contemplating and then if you have a greater understanding of something then you would ask it on the following week. So the best way to take advantage of the time is not only just, oh he, he answered my question or he, I, I got the chance to ask a question that, that's okay. but. But the more important is that if you study the subjects, the meditation or any of the books and that based on this because we would read the books and always have questions in our heart until we would meditate and, and try to get an expansion of its understanding. So all of those are best based on the subjects that are being taught to ask about those to get a further or deeper understanding inshaAllah and then we go deeper into the subjects. But not to go from bouncing from left to right just to throw a question out because we wanted you know to have our question asked on, on the live video because then that takes us all over the place. But the subjects are deep, so if you go back on what we talked about the elevator up and down then people have questions of it like what is, what is going down really and how do we know if we're going up in life. I mean there's so many examples of the questions that's why when I talk to people I ask, what did you understand? from the talks because when we talk we have to go back and watch the video to see what we talked about. So inshaAllah. Good inshaAllah. InshaAllah Jammu Mubarak to everybody, Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzata Ami Yasifun Wa Salaamun Al Mursaleen Wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa Wa Basiri Surat Al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs 
that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.